Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about mouse sensitivity, what it is, and how to choose the range that is most applicable range for you to play in. Let's go. Sensitivity in FPS games is quite a simple concept. It fundamentally describes how much you'll turn in game when you move your mouse an arbitrary distance. When talking about sensitivity, there are many ways to express it. With its sensitivity value, the mouse counts per inch or DPI, and the game's your value. But not every game has the same your value. I like to use a universal measurement like centimeters per 360, which is how many centimeters it takes to do one full 360 degree in game. And degree per millimeter is how many degrees the in game movement is with one millimeter of mouse movement. Contrary to popular belief, there is no perfect sensitivity. Still, you can have an excellent sensitivity that has benefits to you in the game or aim style that you want to optimize for, but there will never be the best sensitivity that you'll be able to do everything the best with. Other misconceptions are around muscle memory and not changing sensitivity. This is a big thing that new people in the community get told which is a complete fad. A player with reasonable mouse control will be able to change their sensitivity in mouse without any significant problems, so long that they don't go into the extremes. There can be notable differences, but that's not related to memory, but more related to comfort and preference. So don't have the mindset to train and use one sensitivity for the rest of your life. The benefits of sensitivity might change. Next one is, higher or lower sensitivity has a higher skill ceiling. Well, this is wrong for many reasons, because if that were the case, you'd still see all the top players using a high sensitivity. Still, they don't work because the many downsides and upsides of the sensitivity, even if they could control it. You should choose your sensitivity off your mousepad size. This is not the best way to decide the quality of sensitivity because it neglects the skill of repositioning and the true nature of sensitivity and its benefits. Here, I can start talking about the differences in sensitivity. For this, I'm going to use 25 to 35 centimeters per 360 as a mid to balanced range sensitivity to determine faster or slower sensitivity as it uses a mix of arm and wrist, but I'll talk that later in this video. So for quicker sensitivity, well, below 25 centimeters per 360, the benefits are that you get more speed with the same movement or force on the mouse compared to a low sensitivity and better tracking for tracking based games like Quake and other arena FPS. Then for lower sensitivity, above 35 centimeters, you get more control and stopping on the target, better for click timing and lower time to kill games like CS or Valorant. Like what I just said, each sensitivity uses different parts of the body to aim. The main components that get used are the wrist, arm, and fingertips. And this should be taken into account when you're deciding on what sensitivity you should use, or what sensitivity range you should play in. For higher sensitivity below 25 centimeters, there is more use of the wrists for more angle sizes and less arm movement. And the opposite for low sensitivity above 35 centimeters. Let's just use a graph to show this. Don't take this graph uh, as a fact because it is super generalized because of the angles of the movement as well as knowing how to use the different parts. You can see that the 25 to 35 centimeter range is right in the middle so that you can use equal amounts of wrist and arm. It assumes that you can use all different parts equally and generally for people that is when above 35 centimeters they use all arm or below 25 centimeters they use all wrist but this isn't the best way you should try to use the different parts for different movements and angles like wrist for small micro corrections and then arm for fast close range tracking as well as large angles this synergy should and can be learned through training but I do like to say that you should be able to use them. Now you know the benefits of different sensitivities and see that the benefits will never be perfect for everything. So far, it is time to look at how to choose a good sensitivity that has the benefits and the training type that you want. Like what I just said, training for equal use of the wrist and arm is excellent, but the balance range might be skewed to one side depending on what type of game or aiming style that you want more. 
Then we can use what I said at the beginning about the benefits of speed and for the game. So let's do some suitable ranges to use as a baseline for games which I have to credit INS for from his aiming FAQ guide which is in the description as well. Wake has extremely fast movement, a lot of different weapon styles so a suitable sensitivity would be 17 to 38. Apex. Paces range from slow long range fights to fast close range fights, mostly projectile weapons that you typically ADS for. Suitable range is 21 to 40 centimeters. Overwatch. Depending on what type of hero you play, assuming you stick to DPS, you can be either very demanding movement wise for Tracer Genji or pretty slow paced McCree Widow. Suitable sensitivity range 20 to 60 centimeters. Fortnite. You need to be comfortable with doing four different things with your mouse in game building, moving, aiming, and editing. It's not worth sacrificing more than one of those to be comfortable in the others. Suitable sensitivity range 17 to 45 centimeters. CSGO slash R6 slash Valorant. Tactical shooters don't often have a lot to worry about in the movement side of things. So even if you're not comfortable doing a 360 or 180, it's fine because you'll rarely have to do a lot of them since it's mostly about crosshair placement or reaction. Suitable sensitivity, 27 to 80 centimeters. Call of Duty or Battlefield. The movement's fast with effort towards tracking and target switching while still having low time to kill. Suitable sensitivity range, 20 to 35 centimeters. Now, while this is just a method and some ideas to base your sensitivity off, you can stray away from this if you're training like for wrist or arm, but try to stay away from extreme sensitivities that are just impractical, like 120 centimeters or three centimeters, which can be useful for some things, but the benefits will never make it suitable for any game. The last point, which it sometimes can be useful to change your sensitivity often, to try and speed up the process of making learning a new sensitivity a lot faster and reach and surpass the level that you were at quickly. The result is you can seamlessly be able to play in a broader range of sensitivities while being comfortable. Okay, if you want the best of both worlds, there is Mouse Excel, which can give you the benefits of both, but worse for things that don't require speed like CS or Valorant, but may have some learning curve. See NRK's guide about it again in the description. Thank you guys for watching. It's a pretty long video this one, but but hope you guys enjoyed. This is the first one of transferring my written documents into my video form and going to be continuing with some more educational content for you all over the next month or so. So subscribe to keep informed about that. As well, go follow my other social media in the description down below. See ya.